Some of the most common questions I've been asked are what are the best investments for dividend income and long-term investing? These two go hand in hand. You see, when it comes to income generation, investments with the highest dividend yield are favorable. Of course, you want to avoid any dividend traps. But when it comes to portfolio longevity, you will need to consider growth and capital appreciation. But you see, dividend income and growth tend to cancel each other out. You'll find that growth tends to be sacrificed in order to provide a higher dividend. So it's almost like an inverse relation. The perfect example are covered call ETFs. And for those who don't know, these are ETFs that use a covered call strategy to generate premium, which is then distributed to investors in the form of a dividend. And this could be upwards of 10 to 12% like JEPI and JEPQ. But this yield is a direct result of sacrificing capital appreciation. That is why these investments fundamentally underperform the overall market, which is a problem. So that is why investors will diversify their portfolios to get a combination of both dividend income and growth. But the question is, can you combine these two into one package, creating an almost perfect all around investment? This is where things get really interesting. Now, I know that SCHD is an extremely popular ETF for dividend investors. It is one of the few funds that has phenomenal growth ability, except for this past year, but it also provides a relatively good dividend yield of around 3%. Its fundamentals revolve around picking dividend stocks that have a strong history of dividend distribution, and more importantly, strong dividend growth and consistency, which is fantastic. But is a 3% yield enough? When the average target inflation rate is around 25 to 3%, you start to wonder whether you're actually generating substantial income or if you're just simply protecting your assets against inflation. But the problem is, it's very difficult for funds like SCHD to generate a dividend yield that exceeds this amount. SCHD's dividend yield is strictly due to its underlying holdings. These individual companies on average provide 2-4% to in dividends, and you don't necessarily find any reliable and strong companies that can provide any more than that. The moment you find an individual company that is providing a 7-10% to dividend yield, be aware that it's very likely that this company could be a dividend trap. SCHD's dividends are referred to as qualified, and generally ETFs that only distribute qualified dividends don't tend to exceed 3.5% in yield. And to be honest, 3% is on the higher end. But on the flip side, when you look at covered call ETFs like JEPI, they can achieve 10% dividend yields because they use the options market to generate this yield. But the downside, as mentioned before, is the limited capital appreciation, and these investments provide non-qualified dividends. And it's a lot more common to find investments that provide non-qualified dividends to have dividend yields of 10-12%. to So is there a fund that combines the two strategies? Now, I do have a video that goes through the differences between qualified and non-qualified dividends, and you can check it out right here. But the most important thing to remember is tax. Qualified dividends are taxed as capital gains, and non-qualified dividends are taxed as regular income. So is there a fund that uses the qualified dividend yield of its underlying holdings, but also takes advantage of the options market to generate income, and most importantly, does this in a way that doesn't sacrifice capital appreciation? And this brings me to DIVO, which is the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. This ETF is probably one of the most interesting funds out there, and is, in my opinion, the sweet spot between dividend income and capital appreciation. Now, I did review this ETF a while ago, but I wanted to touch on it again because there's some very interesting features that need to be mentioned. So before we continue, let's run through some fundamentals so you can get a better understanding of this ETF. DIVO was established in December of 2016, and it currently has almost $3 billion of assets under management. The fund currently has an amazing dividend yield of around 5%. And this is substantially higher than majority of other dividend ETFs. Year to date, the fund has returned almost 4%, significantly outperforming SCHD, which has returned negative 0.5%. And since inception, with dividends distributed, the fund has returned 105%. This is almost exactly the same as SCHD. So clearly the fund has phenomenal capital appreciation ability, but at the same time, it's providing a dividend yield that is almost 50% higher than SCHD. This is exactly that sweet spot between growth and dividend yield. So how does this fund work? DIVO is an actively managed ETF that provides income by selecting stocks from the S&P 500 index and at the same time uses a tactical call writing strategy. The fund aims to generate 4-7% to in annual gross income from two sources, natural dividends and option premiums. 
So the manager writes short-term covered call options on the stocks that he holds in order to generate additional income. And that is accompanied with the qualified dividend income that the underlying holdings generate by themselves. What's really important is that the fund has an emphasis on owning high quality, large cap companies with historical dividend and earnings growth. Sounds just like SCHD. When you look at the fund's holding breakdown, you can see a rather even spread of allocation between financials, consumer defensive, healthcare, technology, energy, industrials, and consumer cyclical. And it's also extremely important to remember that the call writing strategy is written on individual stocks on a tactical basis. The fund only uses 20% of its holdings to write covered calls. This means that the manager is actively deciding which stocks are best to write covered calls against and then leaves the other 80% of the portfolio to appreciate in value like a regular ETF. So this brings me to two major benefits. You see, most covered call ETFs use a much larger chunk of their underlying holdings to write the covered calls against. And this is the key reason why they underperform the overall market. But by leaving a significant portion, you give the fund superior ability for capital appreciation. And the second point is consistency. This is one of the biggest benefits of the CTF. The fund is using a combination of both qualified dividends and non-qualified dividends, where two to 3% is qualified and three to 4% is non-qualified. The portion that is qualified will always be there. So at no point will the dividend yield fluctuate by any significant amount. The problem with call writing strategies is that the premium income is heavily influenced by volatility. And I did highlight this in my previous video where I explained the reason behind the fluctuating dividend yield of covered call ETFs like Jeppy. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest that you do. You can check it out right here. So this consistency in dividend yield gives investors a peace of mind knowing that the majority of the time the yield is going to be around 5%. And when you look at the fund's dividend history, excluding of course its first year and the pandemic crash, the yield has maintained constant. So it's clear that the fund has the ability to appreciate in value while still generating an amazing dividend yield. But what about risk mitigation? When you look at the fund's overall performance in the bear market of 2022 and compare it side by side with SCHD, you can see that it was able to provide superior returns losing only 1% in value versus SCHD, which lost around 4%. This difference is strictly because of the covered call option strategy that the fund uses. Because frankly, when you only look at price return, the funds have depreciated by the same amount. And remember that both of these funds have very similar investing strategies, but the superior dividend yield of Devo gives it that extra edge in a bear market. And keep in mind, this is comparing to an already phenomenal asset with superior risk mitigation. Comparing it side by side with the S&P 500 during the bear market, its performance is unbelievable. This is why this fund has a very low beta of only 0.77, which is significantly lower than SCHD, which has a beta of 0.88. And for those who don't know, when a fund's beta value is below one, it means that it exhibits less volatility than the overall market. So overall, you have a fund that has around 5% consistent dividend yield accompanied with fantastic capital appreciation and phenomenal risk mitigation as well. But there's also another major benefit that really takes it over the top. Its dividends are distributed on a monthly basis, as opposed to SCHD, which distributes on a quarterly basis. This is especially important for income-oriented investors and retirees who plan on using their dividends to pay for their expenses. A more frequent distribution allows for a more predictable and consistent inflow of cash, making it easier to keep track of. And on top of that, monthly distributions allow for more frequent reinvestment opportunities. Being able to reinvest your dividends every month as opposed to every quarter gives you the potential to benefit further from the compounding growth effect. And on top of that, it also allows you to smooth out volatility. Now, it does need to be mentioned that because the fund has a higher dividend yield and uses covered calls to generate a significant portion of it, it does have a bit of a cap on the fund's growth ability. And as mentioned before, a higher dividend yield is usually a direct result of sacrificing capital appreciation. This chart compares the price return of DIVO and SCHD side by side, and you can clearly see the difference. Using the inception date of DIVO for consistency, 
you can see that it has only returned around 43% compared to SCHD, which has returned around 68%. But when you include its dividend distribution, the funds have returned the same amount. Now, I also want to make something very clear. There was a period in 2021 where SCHD completely separated itself in returns from Devo. In fact, majority of the period before that, SCHD was trailing Devo. So something happened right around here. And I will be making another video that explains the reasoning behind this major spike. Moving on. So the big question is, why does this fund only have around $3 billion of assets under management? I mean, you would think that it would be a lot more popular and extremely favorable given all the amazing attributes. So here's the three possible reasons behind this. For one, the fund has a ridiculous expense ratio of 0.5%, which is definitely on the higher end. And just for reference, for every $10,000 invested, you pay $55 in annual fees. So this may immediately raise some red flags for investors. But the reason for the higher expense ratio is simply because of the covered call option strategy. The fund has to compensate for transaction fees. You have to remember that it's an actively managed fund using options trading, and therefore it has a much higher turnover rate compared to a more passive fund like SCHD, which undergoes a reconstitution every quarter. But the overall returns of the fund has already priced in the expense ratio. So what you're seeing here is what you're getting. Now, another problem that I feel many investors are focused on is dividend growth. You see, I've said this before, but dividend growth is just as important as dividend yield because it is an indication of a fund's ability to appreciate in value. If a fund has superior growth ability, then its dividend growth will be just as high, maintaining a balanced ratio. That is why when you look at a fund like SCHD that has fantastic dividend growth, it is simply showing that the fund is able to appreciate in value and therefore increasing the dividend distribution per share. But the problem with this metric is that it doesn't really work when you're looking at a fund like Devo. You have to remember that half of the dividend yield is coming from option premiums. And as I said before, collecting premiums from selling call options can vary every single month depending on volatility and several other factors. So for that reason, you can't look at dividend growth the same way. Now, there is one major issue that I think takes priority, and that is concentration risk. This fund only holds around 30 individual assets that is highly concentrated, and the percentage of assets in its top 10 holdings is more than 60%. This can be a major concern for investors. So when a fund is susceptible to concentration risk, it means that it is heavily influenced by the performance of just a few stocks. So there's more sensitivity to price fluctuations, especially if one of the company in its holdings suffers a major decline due to a random event. So this increases a fund's susceptibility to downside risk. But overall, Devo is a very unique fund that uses a combination of both qualified dividends and non-qualified dividends from covered calls to produce a very attractive and most importantly, a consistent dividend yield of around 5%. A company with a monthly distribution and its ability to appreciate in value, you have a very attractive financial instrument for income-oriented investors, retirees, and growth investors. And that is all for this video. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.